Hello, everyone, and welcome to the midweek program at the J.C. Ralston Arboretum. My name is Blake, and I'm the education assistant here at the Arboretum. And today we are outside of our education yurt because we've got a wonderful program today, Gardening for Kids. We have a pre-recorded segment for you where our nursery technician, Sophia McCusker, sat down with one of the previous horticulturists who worked at the Arboretum, Lizzie Lathers. Uh, they had a wonderful discussion about how to how to engage children in the garden, how to garden with children in mind so that we are exposing them to nature, getting them connected to nature, making sure that we have a, a bright future full of gardeners, making the world a beautiful place. And so of course, because of all of those wonderful things, it is going to be a beautiful program. Those of you who uh, are joining us on YouTube, please like this video and subscribe to our channel and feel free to leave a comment down below. This program was pre-recorded, so I will uh, go ahead and get that pre-recorded uh, segment queued up and rolling. After the pre-recorded session, we do have Lizzie on the Zoom with us and she will be joining us for the Q&A. So do make sure that you think of what your questions you might wanna ask. You are welcome to go ahead and drop them in the chat. We will go through them and answer them and entertain them and it'll be lots of fun. So give me just one moment to get things queued up and rolling. Things are gonna love the tap dancing number we did. They better love the tap dancing number. <laughs> that took like 12 takes, honestly. So, yeah. Hey, everyone. Um, we're talking about gardening with kids. I'm joined here with Lizzie Lathers. Um, she, when did, when, were you, when did you work here? I was a horticulturist here for five years. I left, my oldest kid is seven, so I left when I had him. Um, so seven years ago, but I was here for five years at a horticulturist, as a horticulturist. Yeah. And funny, uh, funny connection is Lizzie actually <laughs> interviewed me via Zoom when I was in Utah for yeah. my internship. And then when I started my internship, she had had Hank and yep. it's gone. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have a three-year-old who's somewhere around here. He'll pop in, I'm sure. His name is Jimmy. Um, if you've been around or heard our, our uh, programs, you've probably heard me reference him. Um, and we're just here to share a little bit about our experience and what works for us with getting kids out in the garden, getting them planting, working. Um, and enjoying it. And enjoying it. Yeah, I have now three kids. Hank is my oldest, he's almost seven. Uh, Juniper is four, and my youngest, Mary Ellen, is one. Um, and they all garden. <laughs> so we, we and uh, sounds like Jimmy does too, so. We feel kind of like we're experts. <laughs> yeah, we're experts uh, for our own family. Yeah, yep. <laughs> Hopefully our some tidbits will come yeah. in handy for yours. Yeah, so take my, my goal for today is take what, take what you think might work for you and try it. And then if it doesn't work for you, let it go. Yep. If it doesn't work for your family, oh, that's okay. So you had some notes. Oh, yeah. I have, so let's start at like getting, um, like infants, right? So it seems I was, when I was typing up notes for this, I typed out the sentence, um, gardening with infants. And I was like that. It doesn't happen. <laughs> that seems insane. <laughs> gardening with infants is you have the bouncy chair out there between yes. naps, they're fed. They're happy because there's some sunshine on them and you're getting a few things done. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You're putting the passy in. Yep. Between uh, between planting and things. And you might like, uh, if, I feel like we had the blanket out and we would go, yeah. I would put him on the blanket and then when he got off the blanket, he would get annoyed because yeah. the grass is evil. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then, yeah. Yeah. You get what you can done. You get the plants watered. You also garden a lot during nap time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I've had a pretty large garden because it's kind of, it's important to me and our family. Um, the whole time we've had kids and it's been it's frustrating i and it's it's it gets less frustrating with more kids so because you think you can get a lot done during a nap time but hank was not a good napper um i would get everything lined up and you'd maybe get like 15 minutes till the monitor chirped also i've, I've researched uh long range monitors <laughs> too because the garden is not close to the bedroom so if there's questions about that. <laughs> the Wi-Fi. Um, yeah, well, I, I don't like the Wi-Fi ones. <laughs> they creep me out. So uh, the Panasonic one is the longest range. Um, 
But then with my daughter, when she was a baby, she did not like being outside that much. So she did spend time in the bouncer with some music on. Um, but yeah, the infant one, plus you're tired and yeah. Um, to be perfectly honest, I tried, uh, so Jimmy's three, I moved, we moved into our house. We've got about a third of an acre, um, moved into our house th five years ago. So COVID hit for some reason that, uh, well, COVID hit and then I was pregnant. So that was just a lot of sleeping that year. Uh, <laughs> and then Jimmy came. And I was like, all right, this is it. We're going to get, the we're going to do the garden, right? We're going to, we're going to finish. Greg likes to throw this in at the, at the arb here. We're going to finish the arboretum. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to get done. And that just didn't happen. I was out. I, I tried to keep some things alive. It didn't, it didn't work. So that was a big, like learning, like learning point for me is, is like managing expectations. And so last year, um, and then I went back to work. So that was a whole other element added. Um, but I really love coming home to containers on my porch. And so my goal for last year, which I actually achieved was to keep my, uh, containers alive for the year. And I had a few, I had a few things on the porch and that was my goal and it, and I did it. Yeah. And it was awesome. Yeah. Yeah. If, <laughs> if you're watching this and you've started, you're just starting gardening and it's with kids, I always recommend to people like get some five gallon buckets, um, and drill holes in them, plenty of holes, holes. and, um, get some nice potting mix from even Lowe's or Home Depot or the garden center, like something that has drainage. So some perlite, you see the white chunks and then some compost or mix some compost in, um, and plant what your family likes, like, uh, peppers, my, it's not a, it's not a garden without hot peppers for my husband. <laughs> you know, obviously that's not for the kids, but, um, and, uh, carrots are our favorite and carrots grow great in five gallon buckets. This is a fun one, even for experiments, like sprinkle it like it's a cupcake full of carrot seeds, like that many carrot seeds. And then you'll have to like thin them if, if you get a good germination, but then let them sprout up. So that first month water them from the top, then this is the trick, get a tray under it and water it from the bottom. So only like, it'll be every couple days. It gets hot here, maybe every day. Uh, and the carrots will grow the entire depth of the five gallon bucket Whoa. and you'll pull out, you know, like a carrot this big and the kids will be shocked. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. That's happening. Don't, yeah. That's happening it's at my house really, this year. And the carrot <laughs> greens are really pretty. They're tough. I do it now. This would be something like start now because carrots don't like super hot. Uh, but that's a really fun one. You can even do that in the wind, like in the fall to harvest now. And if you get a frost, it's not a big deal to haul yeah. one five gallon bucket, like right inside your door. Yeah. Um, so that's a really, that's a fun one. For, for that kids. is awesome. Yeah. yeah. And that would probably, that's probably, Jimmy's right about the perfect age yeah. for that. So I mean, who wouldn't want to chomp like <laughs> a carrot that big? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yeah. And you can do, uh, turnips don't grow that way, but you can do those in buckets. Uh, we had a little house on the prairie sort of tangent this year where everybody wanted to grow turnips because they talk about them and we were just eating them raw like an apple out there so nice. plant what people are interested in my kids do not like tomatoes we're not planting tomatoes in a bucket if we only have five five gallon buckets <laughs> don't skip the just because it's popular doesn't mean you have to plant it <laughs> yeah yeah we've got um i'm still trying to figure out what i think we'll do carrots yeah because right now there's a lot of things that <clears throat> we're going through a phase of like not wanting to eat anything. So yeah. it's hard, it's hard to figure out, which is why, um, I went yes. to big bloomers and I saw these and I saw these strawberries. And one thing that he, my little dude goes crazy for is some strawberries. So yeah. we're going to, I think we're going to try some in a container. And then I've also got some, uh, little pine berries that I planted last year to just kind of take over. Uh -huh. Um, I think pine they're, berries. Pine, they're white strawberries. Oh, oh yes. I've seen them, but yeah. I have never grown them, but yeah. yeah, I just stuck them. We had a couple little berries, but I didn't really try for them. We yeah. Got. And strawberries, I think like the gateway 
especially with kids, is the containers, which don't have to be expensive, five gallon buckets. And everybody, ha if you have a yard, you can plant strawberries because they're an excellent ground cover right on the edge of your bedding plants even. I mean, even if you just have like some evergreen shrubs, you have a little dirt in front of them and they're a beautiful row cover or uh, ground cover. And I, I took a picture of our patch, so maybe Blake can right now. Um. <laughs> and the little ones, the little ones I got, I actually planted, I've got um, a place where all my water drains, so I can't really yes. put stuff in. And like I said, I haven't seen, a, I haven't seen like a good crop yet, yeah. but. Um, it does usually like you plant the plugs and then it's like a one year until the next one. You'll get a few okay. choice ones, but then you'll have enough that even if the rabbits or the birds eat them, your kids will still get some too. Um, I'm excited. Yeah, our patch is huge <laughs> and it's like, we can't take vacation in May because there's so many strawberries. <laughs> uh, and they last us all year, um, but they're, they're beautiful. And I order the plugs um, pretty inexpensive online. Um, we can put those up. I don't know if you have show notes or whatnot, but there's a there's links in the description. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and pick them and uh, just put the plugs in. Oh, <laughs> that's a fire truck. <laughs> um, uh, oh, I had a thought in the minute. Well, gone. we were on toddlers and what we were easy yeah. for them. Yep. Oh, yeah. Peas are wonderful to grow. Uh, you'll need some sort of trellis for like garden peas. And those like to grow when it's cooler. So you'd wanna be planting those now, if not like last month. Um, planting them in September is great too, cause then you get it before the frost, uh, but they're right at toddler height to pick at. Um, my daughter yeah. Juniper loves garden peas. That's one of our favorites. I had a little list of what our other favorites were. Let me see. Yeah, last oh, year. Oh, cucumbers. Does last Jimmy like cucumbers? Mine eat them like wildfire. He is just not <laughs> okay. a That's super, fine. he's super into berries. Uh, yeah, so yeah. Berries are consistent, have, but. If you have more room, blackberries and raspberries are also very satisfying, but they, they take up a lot of space. Yeah. I've got so a strawberries are. I have a blackberry because that's another mm -hmm. that's another strategy with gardening with kids. You buy plants with the best intentions, um, and then I think that blackberry has been in that container for oh yeah uh, well over a year. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but it's still alive and checking. So one day yeah. it's gonna get in the ground. It's okay. Once you have a six year old, great. you have a built in hole digger. So um, <laughs> just get them the right tools. We'll we'll talk about tools later. Also, um, and you talked about this when we talked before, was having flowers. Yes. Having flowers mm. for them to pick. I, I get a hand-picked bouquet almost every day. Um, starting now, the daffodils have started in our yard. We have some uh, anemone bulbs. Uh, those get picked pretty heavily. Uh, but that that's very satisfying. And flowers tend to be a little bit easier than vegetables even. Um, yeah, yeah. Last year, my strategy, so he would he would have been two. Last year, my strategy was uh, petunias and calabrocoa in the pot in, in my oh, like, yeah. porch containers, because even if he like manhandled them, like, you know, fistful of plant, it, it's going to go, grow right it's back. It's going to grow back. Yeah. It's going to be good. Yeah. Uh huh. Zinnias, too, because they could use a pinch. Um, so yeah, if they actually, pull the flower off, then you just get more flowers. And that's, uh, actually got some yeah. zinnia seeds because that's on my short list to try this yeah, year is, yeah. some, is some zinnias in my yard. Um, and we love sunflowers too. And then let some sunflowers go to seed on the plant, then cut that head off and like lay it outside your window and you'll have all sorts of birds coming down and you'll, the kid, uh, my kids love watching the birds come down. We have bird books and bird bingo. Um, and you just seeing them peck right out of the sunflower is really fun. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I did that. Um, I grew sunflowers in my previous position was a retirement community. Oh yeah. And so I took the sunflower heads yeah. and gave them to like retirement the, community, yeah. kids, school. There's a same. lot of crossover. <laughs> same. Uh, it's yeah. probably what all of us should be doing is just staring out a window, us uh, watching birds swoop down, but you know, the phones get, get our attention. <laughs> um, uh, I also had, if you have more space, uh, watermelons and cantaloupe are really fun. Uh, Cause it's kind of a fun experiment to see if it's ripe or not. Or, um, and I always get the ones with seeds because I think kids need to learn how to spit the seeds. <laughs> yeah, obviously. 
How are, how are you? Are you? Uh, are you even gardening if you don't have a squat, a compost squash? Yeah. No. Mm -mm. <laughs> no. There's always something growing out of it. <laughs> what do you think about anything more about toddlers, babies? Uh, distractions. For, yeah. For toddlers, um, one of our favorite, especially in the summertime, once it gets warm, is a water table. Yes. So it's the uh, interest. Uh, if I'm wanting to work, the attention span is like this big. Um, and so, <laughs> and, and so, so having distractions, yeah. having, having toys that you know, they're going to love to play with like that fire yeah. truck. Well, can I just fire. go, I'm just going to grab one of my tools I brought. <laughs> Are you guys demolition derbying? Get yourself one of these. The, my kids just, cause we fill up a big trough, like a water table and um, fill one of these up. And it's even my one and a half year old can figure out how to pump and how to spray. And when it's hot outside, like I don't care what they're watering. They think that they're watering the plants and it's just, I, I think it's like a $5 thing that you can go pick up. But I, all my kids have loved one of these sprayers that had the two parts, like the pumping and the spray. That's awesome. Yeah. I need one of those. Yeah. I give, those, I give those out as gifts to like three-year-olds, like <laughs> birthday parties. I'm like, here, trust me. <laughs> trust me. Uh, but water's great. We have a gravel pit yeah. in our garden. Um, the sand, sandboxes I found, you know, get a little funky when the rain yeah. and no one remembers to cover them. So the gravel pit has worked for us. Yeah. And uh, a they warning. have to get old enough to not eat it. It's a life lesson, but um, it does happen. <laughs> also yeah. older siblings help. <laughs> Older sibling, it gets it gets easier with with more older siblings. <laughs> I also have, uh, you know, giving them a tool like you're using a trowel and popsicles, and uh, popsicles. Just eating a popsicle. Oh, just that'll, popsicle. that'll get you 15 yeah. minutes with a yeah. toddler. Yeah, especially in the summertime. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, 15 minutes. Yeah. Is, uh, you can get a lot done in 15 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> Should we move on to the next age group? Yeah. Okay. I find that uh, like four till eight years old, that's kind of what my two oldest are in now. They're very eager to help. So this is what I find this- I see like, him starting. That's yes. definitely starting. It start, yeah, it yeah. starts and um, that's when you really need to foster it and like make it fun. Yes. Um, I think that's something we haven't touched on yet is like we talked a little bit when we first came out here is that it needs to be fun. We're, we're doing the gardening and we want them to be involved because we love it. And, but it is a chore. Yeah. Yeah. And so it's, but it's, fun. and pretty much between four and eight, if you're doing it with them, they're not going to, they're not going to think it's work. <laughs> they think it's fun. So, um, that's the, I find this age is like the time where I have to slow myself down, slow my expectations and, and take the time to teach with them, uh, take them along with me. Uh, like Junie loves putting seeds in the ground, pea seeds, and she's very good at it. She, you know, Hank's more speed oriented. So like give him a hole to dig, you know, he wants it done fast. Where Junie is like my more careful, you know, a little bit slower, methodical, likes to bead, likes to cut paper into small shapes. So she wants to put seeds in the ground at, and she, like, I can give her an example and she will put them two inches apart. Um, I have a flat yesterday. She sewed flower seeds into a flat and I knew that she was putting one or two seeds per cell. She was not dumping them. She was just a very careful, uh, wanted the label right and, um, stuff like that. They love to write on the label. So, you know, and there is nothing cuter than a garden label with kid handwriting on it. Like when, if I see radish that Hank's written, I'm just like, Oh, <laughs> Um, so that's the stage I'm in now. I've, I've worked with older ages too, but I think that that, that's the stage where it's like, it, and they're, they're watching you. That stage is they're watching you. So if you're having fun gardening, even if you got music on, you got to, you have ice water, you have a beer, it's late at night, whatever, or, you know, it's later in the evening, you're working with your, your spouse, partner, and uh, you guys are having fun. Your kids are also watching. They're like, oh, yeah, gardening is fun. fun. This is yeah. what we do. This is what our family does. Um, 
even if they're playing football, they're kicking the football in the garden. There's a video of me, of Hank kicking a football, he, you know, between a trellis. He thinks it's like uh, a goalpost. Um, they're still watching and they, they're, it's going into their files and they're like, gardening can be fun. I've watched my parents have a lot of fun doing that. Um, I know in the future, it's going to, it, that little, that little video is going to play in their yeah. head. Yeah. Um, and that goes back to starting, like, don't be afraid to take your infant out, even if yeah. it's for five minutes. Right. Yes. Yeah. And then there's meltdowns. It's yeah. okay. Yeah. Oh, one more thing with toddlers, infants is just the walking of the garden walk at different times of day, whenever they're cranky, like my, my youngest, when she hasn't got a good night of sleep, like sometimes outside is the only place we're going to get to the first nap. You know, <laughs> if we have to get outside to get, to be happy. And, uh, so it's just walking in the garden. I have a snack. I got my coffee. Um, and that's, that's gardening to them. And that's gardening with kids. And it's a destination too. Like you have a pot. Hey, let's go outside. You're not just going outside aimlessly. It's like, we're going to look at the garden. Yeah. We're going to look at the pots. Let's see how many flowers, any new leaves, um, stuff like that. And then I think for the next, uh, the next age group, nine and beyond, uh, is they're, they're capable. I, I strongly believe that they're capable of using tools, you know, and it's time. It, they need to like learn how to do some sort of work. <laughs> um, and this is the time where it's like walking, working alongside them, treating them like an equal. A garden is a place where you can do that and they'll feel like they are an adult, which is all they want to do when they're 10. You know, they want to feel like a big kid, big person. <laughs> Me, yeah. Let's have it after this, huh? Okay. You can have um, pretzels though and share. Um, is it okay if he has pretzels? Okay. Uh, you never know if there's a gluten thing. <laughs> oh, they want to, they want to feel like an adult. So, um, and I'll say even, even at this age, he's, yeah. he wants to help. Right. Like he yeah. wants to, if I'm using a tool, he wants to also yes. use that tool. Yeah. Um, and, and Maybe in a I safe... should get that shovel. That's our favorite. Yeah. Cause it's, it's like a, well, it's made for adult work. So this, yeah. this is an actual shovel that they use for trenches or like if they were to dig out your crawl space under your house, like they would use shovels like this. It has the that? actual like steel. It has a fiberglass handle. It's not going to break. Like we have broken too many yeah. kid shovels that yeah, I was kids. finally like, no, we're either sawing off a handle or, <laughs> or, and then I, so I went searching and I found this one and we have, we, we have multiple. I've also gifted this as birthday gifts. Um, but you can find this, you know, just short handled shovel. And, um, that made all the difference, uh, or for Hank, cause he just kept breaking them and he wanted to feel like a big guy and, uh, Get that's, them their real tools. That's the thing. Yeah, I would yeah. definitely add that. I had not yeah. thought of that, but also get as many tools as you have kids. Yes. Because <laughs> <laughs> there will be there will be arguments on who has what tool. Yeah. Um, um, kid <laughs> tools are not made to work with. No. Unfortunately. Mm -hmm. No. I wish they were. Yeah. So um, I just it's almost the same for a nice trowel as it is for a kid trowel, and right. uh, just get the it's it's the correct size for them oh one more okay so and when they hit like that 10 to even you know college uh age they're they're starting to see that life has a lot of chores life is a lot of work to keep it up and um whether it's a pile of dishes or a pile of emails or your car needs cleaning out like they aren't their life is fun is full of not fun things it's not always fun um we're not always going bowling every weekend or whatever. <laughs> so they have to be able to see gardening is the perfect example for them to see, okay, there is a weedy patch. What is mom going to do to deal with that weedy patch? She's right. going to put some music on. I'm going to say, I'm only working for 30 minutes. I'm going to work for 30 minutes tomorrow too. We're going to have many hands make work light. I say that often. So when you have help, it also helps. Um, it's just, it's a nice thing for example, for them to see how to deal with the tough things in life um, and using good tools, working at a comfortable time of day, 
um, giving yourself a treat at the end, <laughs> whatever, whatever yeah. it takes. Um, it's a good, it's, I think it's the perfect uh, environment for them to learn how to deal with life's tough things. So, yeah. Uh, and working through those, those, um, those hard things. Yes. Cause there's a lot of, uh, in gardening, there's a lot of, there's a lot of, you know, you could call it failure, but, oh, yeah. but you keep going. Yeah. You if the more. rabbits, if the rabbits <laughs> ate everything, that's life. Yeah. You plant more <laughs> you plant and more. you get some little fences. You, you know, it looks like down here they had rabbits. They got some yep. scrap uh, chicken wire and they figured it out and the plants are growing. <laughs> plants want to grow. Yeah, they do. They will come back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, the kids, I asked them what they thought. Their favorite things are planting peas, eating carrots, eating the strawberries, cutting the strawberries, cleaning, cutting, getting them in the freezer. Um, I catch Junie playing imaginary play with the mulch quite often. Yep. Um, she even said it's fun to do with everyone. Grandma, Pa, Dad, Hank. She, she is at four has even noticed that everybody wants to garden. And that's the fun part is that it brings a whole, uh, a whole crowd. Her favorite tool is a small trowel. Hank's is the shovel. Um, and he also likes the scuffle hook. Uh, he likes that he has his own row in the garden. So once they hit a certain age, they get their own little section. He's plots all, you know, what he wants to put in there the whole time. He likes mulching and digging and walking in the garden. So that's what they had to say about gardening with kids, which is kind of fun. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Jimmy has, uh, doesn't have an opinion yet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he loves... Well, uh, he'd probably say water table. I didn't ask him much. Yeah, about, but. At, at Hank at his age would have been the trucks. So yeah. this is yeah. uh, very appropriate on what their favorite thing is. <laughs> we have the big Tonkas. Oh yeah, so. we've got a couple of those. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and moving, um, he likes to uh, fill the truck with pine cones. Oh we've yeah. Got a pine, we've got a couple pine trees, so yeah, getting the pine cones picked up. Yeah, that's fun. Mm -hmm. It's awesome. Big loads. Yeah. <laughs> um, should we do some uh, planting? Yeah. You guys want to do some planting? Yeah. Yeah. Can you count how many holes Hank needs to dig? How many? Eight? You said eight, four eight, Hank. Four. Can you start popping them out? Remember the squeeze? Good. Boy, that is some expert holes digging. Nice job, Nick. <laughs> a little deeper, honey. Yeah, give it a push. We'll have to water it. Yeah. Watering's the most fun. Yeah, it is. <laughs> you can fill up our sprayer and show Jimmy. Ooh, yeah, we need a sprayer. Here it goes. Look at that. Okay, give it to him so he can try it, huh? Do you want to try the sprayer? Yeah. Okay, Junie. Show him how to Watch pump it. It needs a pumping. Don't step on them. Don't step on them. <laughs> Hit this. Here we go. Oh, there you go. There we go. Good job. Nice. Water them in good. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> what a bunch of cuties. No, right <laughs> <laughs> Poor Hank. Right. I'm not cute. I've never been cute a day in my life. Okay. All righty. Well, that was a lot of fun. One thing Sophia <laughs> pointed out during that program, she's like, this is really chaotic. But honestly, I feel like that can be a lot of what gardening yeah. for kids can be like what did you call it parallel what? parallel play sure it's a, it's a hip uh, 
parenting term nowadays, and it's just usually it's referencing kids, but when they play together, but not necessarily interacting with each other, but like they may be doing the same thing. Sure. Like Lizzie mentioned, they're watching, they're paying attention. So even if they're playing next to next to each other, they're yeah. still interacting in some ways. For sure. They're not hitting each other. So that's a plus, right? Absolutely. And they were <laughs> in the great outdoors during all of that, which yeah. is like a, a, a lot to be said there. Cause... And they, also they met uh, maybe 20 minutes before that. My little guy and yeah, our little for sure. So they, they had a lot of they had a lot of truck business to get done. Oh, yeah, there and, were a lot of fire. There was a lot, that, and all the matchbox cars disappeared, and we found them in the uh, garbage truck. Oh, good. So. Well, glad they were safely recovered. That would have been a tragedy <laughs> to be sure. But we did have a question come in. We would love to have more questions come in. We do have Lizzie joining us. But so the, the first question that came up was from Marsha. She wanted to know if she can use a bucket for, from Lowe's or, and this was with regard to the, the, the growing vegetables in containers in buckets, if they can just be a bucket from Lowe's or if it's ones that held paint. I would avoid, um, I would avoid anything that held chemicals. Um, you can get food grade buckets. Uh, I know, I don't know if this is still a thing. This is something my mom used to do, <laughs> um, but she would go to the bakery and the frosting and other, other condiments would come in buckets. So maybe check with your bakery. You may be, be able to get them, but you can also purchase them. Sure. Lizzie. I, I prob I have grown things in just like the normal five gallon buckets that probably aren't food grade. You know, the ones that say like, yeah. you, but like if sure it enough. held paint and there was dried paint on it, I I probably wouldn't eat from that. Um, uh, yeah, I would try to get some. I would try to either get the unused ones or if you, like I said, I know frosting. I, I don't know if that's still a thing. Giant tubs know. of frosting? Five gallon buckets of frosting. I'm Go maybe your... more interested in the full five <laughs> gallon buckets of frosting. I need five gallons of blue icing. Yes, <laughs> Don't please. ask me a question. <laughs> it's, it's for gardening, I swear. <laughs> We're gonna grow vegetables in it. Don't judge me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Awesome. Uh, well, why is your tongue so blue? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we did have a question from Rich that was a bet. He wanted to know if we could talk about the yurt and our kids' vegetable and edible gardens here at the JCRA. They're was looking it? really good. They yeah, were. they really they are. Good. No kidding. Yeah. So Elizabeth Overcash, our education programs manager might be able to, to weigh on this. What, what do you have to say, Elizabeth? Hey, everybody. Um, Lizzie actually helped build the yurt. That's a little, another fun tidbit when we installed the yurt. I think it was 2016, right, Lizzie? Yeah, um, that sounds it, right. We put it in and the yurt is a, a really, if you ever get a chance to come out to the gardens and see the gardens, it's sort of tucked back in the corner near the Rose Garden. And it's a unique place in the Arboretum that we get to play and have some fun with different things that we plant around the yurt. There are more um, plantings that can change in and out based on what we're doing with programming. And you'll see a lot of edibles being grown around there like herbs and also cut flowers, but vegetables, especially in the summertime because our camp program, our summer camp program is uh, a really good help in the, the yurt yard, we call it but they get to do um, yurt yard chores in the morning when they come to camp and help us weed and water. We give them jobs like scouting for insects and you know different problems that might be happening so they can do a little journaling based on the plants too. Um, but it's a great, a great spot that we've been doing a little trial and error with different things. It's not set up to be a production heavy garden it's more to be you know this is what a, a carrot looks like when it's growing or this is what a pepper is or you know this is okra okra is one that the the kids love because of the flowers and then also the way they get to like use the scissors to cut the okra from the plant so that's a fun one that I know that our campers always seem to love to to have out in the garden but yeah it's just a, a fun place that we're always experimenting with you know, different things for the kids to to see how they grow and also be able to, to be part of the garden while they're with us in the summer. And sometimes we even have some homeschool groups or some other um, youth groups. We've had students from the university actually uh, come out and help plan it before too. So it's it's a great place for people to to get involved and be part of the garden. 
Yeah, and I will second that. Well, any any and everybody, even if you don't like okra the vegetable, you should absolutely grow <laughs> okra the plant because those flowers are truly spectacular. They are really beautiful. Are there hibiscus relatives? Right? I think so. I, they like look an I, awful lot like hibiscus. I'm put sure. on the spot, so I forgot everything that I know. That but happens. I'm pretty and sure that's that fair. they're hibiscus. They're the yeah. same shape. For sure. And there's cultivars where the uh, the plant has like really nice purple foliage and then the okras themselves are red and then like contrast that with the creamy white flowers. They are really something to behold. So I, I yeah. personally don't love okra, the vegetable. I will- If you pickle it. Have you ever had pickled pickle okra? It. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think it's so tall too. It's, it's so hard. easy. Yeah. It's easy to grow as like a vertical statement. It's Honestly. Nice. Absolutely. And it's yeah. easy. I remember growing um, okra is one I love because it's so, you put it in the ground and if you don't water it, it is fine. It is trucking. No doubt. If you pick it 20 seconds too late though, it's woody and then it's yeah. no good. But for sure. But then t the next day it's it's full again. So yeah. And they really, they flower just it's like amazing. all summer long and are producing fruit all summer long. And yeah, really, They're really wild. a great plant. Really great plant. So uh, it looks like that's really all the questions that have come into the chat, which, which is fine. Uh, Sophia and Lizzie, do either of you have anything that maybe popped into your head since we filmed this that maybe you wanted to add to our program or are we, we feeling just generally good about, about this? Um, I'm feeling pretty good. I'd okay. say if you're watching this and you have young kids and you're trying to get them involved, you're doing great. Yeah. I feel like we need to honestly emphasize that again. If y'all are if y'all are going outside, honestly, you're leaps, doing it right. <laughs> leaps and bounds ahead of anybody else. You're really, doing it right. Even sure. if it's out on a even if it's out on a balcony in in an apartment with a five gallon bucket. No doubt. There's so many ways to do it, and or just taking them to I don't know maybe the J.C. Ralston Arboretum and uh, engaging in any any number of the wonderful <laughs> programs. Like we do have a lot of camps and fun stuff, but like right now we've got something in the garden called the Garden Story Walk, where you can take you can take your wee ones out here, and we've got little little uh, picture books set out on signs throughout the garden. So you like read a page and then wander to the next page and there's there's a garden in between there. There's plants in between there. You're out in nature, you're exposing them to nature, you're showing them that it's a good place to be, a fun place to be. And that's all free and that's all free. It's available yep. anytime you come out here, so. My kids already asked when we were going back. <laughs> oh, good. Honestly. Yeah. And that's great. And, and, and why not? Because it, it is always changing. I used to, I used to say every week you come here, it's different, but then I started working here and guess what? Every day it's different. And then the more you look at it throughout the day, things change. It's a, it's a completely different garden in the morning than it is in the afternoon. And just watching the seasons change, watching nature evolve in the way that it does. When I say, when I to tell people I work here, I was at a, I had a birthday party with a, for a four-year-old this weekend and someone asked me, oh, well, like, you know, there's probably not much going on, you know, Ooh. over the winter. Ooh, how there long? There is stuff, yeah, every week of the year. You can come. Yeah. If you come every week, you'll see something a little different. Absolutely. And you're, and you're gonna learn something just by being here. It, it is educational, it is good for your physical health, good for your mental health, all yeah. that good stuff. Just all around wholesome. Too many reasons to enumerate to, uh, to get your children out here. One thing yeah. um, I feel like Mark likes to say that um, like we have the dedicated your area that's kind of where our, it's like our children's hub, but um, our director likes to point out that the whole garden, we don't have a children's garden because the whole garden is yeah. for everyone. It's for everyone. So we don't need a dedicated space where we sort of, you know, fence them in and, and the kids <laughs> there. Yeah. Like they, for sure. they go out and go wherever, wherever it's nice. And honestly, and you can see some really Gosh. amazing things. It doesn't. When limit. we were sitting here with this program, we had a hawk <laughs> just land on the branch up there. And yeah. it's just, I mean, he was, he was maybe looking for the rabbits that are trying to, to poach our vegetables back here, which is fine. That's just nature. It's the circle of life, all that yeah, good okay stuff. That. But like, you're going to see animals, you're going to see flowers, you're going to see plants. You're insects, just, so many insects. So many insects. I was, I was walking behind someone, a visitor the other day, 
And the guy turns around and he's like, that's like the third, he's like, that's like the most wildlife I've seen. And he was like at the front entrance. He was like, <laughs> we haven't even gotten into the garden. And he was like already like, oh, there's a bug and here's a butter. Like it was, it was funny. Yeah. And we are in, we're in Raleigh, North Carolina. In the belt line. I the can see. The belt line. I, I wish we could turn the camera for it. We actually moved uh, the initial place we set up for this because we had the belt line in the background. I was like, ah, I don't really, really yeah. want that. But I mean, you know, it's, it's a part of it as, as much as we like to it's pretend that humans aren't a part of nature like like we are like we are nature we're, we're maybe not the best stewards that we could be potentially but like we we are a part of it so anyway thank you so much lizzie for coming out the other day and filming this with us thank you for being You're welcome. here for, it was a joy Q &A. no kidding absolutely we are really <laughs> grateful had a great time <laughs> good i'm glad and we certainly probably want to have you back on this program at some point so we will we will maybe be in touch about uh i don't know we'll, we'll see but yeah. it, it was wonderful Think of to a have subject <laughs> okay that's great i i love i love that creative freedom we will we will take that and run with it <laughs> to be sure and thank you sophia for for coordinating all this and coming up with the idea and, and conducting the interview oh, that with was Lizzie. was that me I did that. it was you really did you really did that <laughs> And, and you did a great job. We are very, we're very happy to have been able to put on this program. And of course, thank you all for joining us for today. Uh, be back here next week for the midweek program. We will be back at three o'clock for the midweek program doing herbaceous perennials you can't kill. But we will also be here at 10 a.m. <laughs> for the day of giving all the way through to 6 p.m. And we are, we are still in the process of planning that. So even we don't know what sort of fun and shenanigans we get into. So make sure you join us for that because it is bound to be a good time. We will see you all then. Y'all take care.